So the exceptions to the rules, electron configuration rules, are shown here for chromium and for copper. And what you can see here is in the in this particular diagram, um, the previous situation has mutual repulsion and it has an unfilled shell. And so when you go to the next one, it has the option. This has the option of, of remaining like this. So this particular instance, it could stay like this. Uh, and you would have some mutual repulsion and unfilled shell. Um, but if you if you don't have it and the electron moves from the S, um, you have a situation that's far more stable. You now have the complete, um, all the 3D and 4S all in balance. Uh, and you can see that the same, a similar thing happens for copper. You can see that here there is um, a lack of balance going on here. Uh, and so you have the option of just having the S's nice and full uh, and the D's imbalanced, or you can have all the D's balanced and uh, just this one here. And so you can have an option of um, having these, this one here and here, or the opposite. Uh, and so the option is to have at least everything in this situation is either balanced in it's all completely half full or it's all completely full in the copper section. And so that's more stable. Uh, and so if you want to picture that a little bit, um, you can see that there is a, a degree of stability with the with this situation here in that they're all balanced. Um, what I like to think of is uh, that, that because the electrons are waves and they're spinning, uh, like on a record, uh, you want everything balanced out so it can spin and be in a nice balance um, rather than be imbalanced and rock the boat and fall over or, or something. And so there's a there's a uh, simulation here that I've got. And so this isn't really uh, a simulation, it's a demonstration of standing waves. And they, I know they used to make fun of um, the idea that the reason there are eight shells is because there's an octave. Um, I think he got laughed down in a, in a famous uh, chemistry get together. Um, this one also doesn't uh, make a lot of sense, but it is a huge coincidence uh, that electrons are in waves. Um, and the only way they can have orbitals is sort of like standing waves. And this is a demonstration of standing waves. Uh, and so you've, you've the first standing wave, it looks very much like the, the round ball. Uh, the second standing wave looks very much like um, three, um, these three P orbitals, uh, sort of dumbbell shaped. Um, and then coincidentally, uh, the third principal energy, the third standing level, um, you have uh, five, uh, and so it matches one through five. I think we even can see the seven if you look carefully. Uh, you can see the nodes. Uh, there you can see the nodes, uh, and you can see that there are seven standing waves. If you put a, a round atom-like thing like that and spin it around and make it have waves, uh, like electrons are, quite coincidentally. Uh, and so you can see that, um, Obviously, if, if I put, uh, and this is going down, we're slowing down the oscillations now. And so we're going back from seven, five, uh, three, and one standing wave that um, you can see if there is a lack of, this is quite a sensitive setup. Um, if you don't have this balanced, um, then you're not going to see um, the standing waves created. Uh, and so the electrons, if they're not evenly balanced around this uh, circular thing, which is a sort of a demonstration analogy. I don't know what to call it. I'm not going to say that there are eight electrons per shell because there's eight keys in an octave. Um, but this is a heck of a lot more similar in that the electrons are actually waves around spinning around the positive nucleus. And this is actually um, some waves spinning around in a circle doing the exact same thing. Uh, and so obviously you want a balanced and, and copper and chromium are far more balanced if you spread them out. And um, if I go back to the um, slide again, if I go back to the slide again, you can actually see that chromium does have that balance if they're spinning all in the same direction. Uh, this is quite imbalanced here. Uh, and same with uh, copper. Uh, it's far more balanced. All right, uh, and just to help you with the periodic table, uh, where to find them to, to sort of remember it's copper and chromium. So if you go to the periodic table, you can see that chromium's here. So there's the one, two, three, four. And so this one pops over here. 
uh, in to make the five and the copper again it, it's just one short uh, and so the calcium uh, if you'd like to call it that the calcium electron will drop over here uh, and so you just need to remember the chromium and copper are just the four going up to the five or the nine going up to the ten uh, if you can visualize that to try and remember what the exceptions are uh, just because my students have asked it, I'm just going to add uh, one more exception. Again, I don't think QCA um, is going to add this to the test. It's basically if you have a transition metal iron, uh, you take the electrons from the 4S2 first before you take them from the 3Ds. Uh, and so for an example for titanium, um, you'll take the electrons from here. Uh, and so for if it's 2+, plus, uh, take two electrons from here, not from the 3D. And so that is the electrical configuration for titanium.